Okay, the next common type of graph is line graph. And line graph can be used in many, many situations. So for this particular line graph, this could be just a made up graph that's not based on any real data. Now, remember I said, when you get a graph, you should look at the title, but in this case, there's no title. And then the next step is to look at the X axis and the Y axis. Uh, I'm making this a little bit hard for you because there's no title for either axis. But that's fine, you know, so this is just to kind of to get you familiar on the structure of the line graph. Um, the only thing that's included is different color lines, right? Blue is a first W. We can think of this as first week. And then green is second week. So it's some kind of data that was collected for two weeks. Right? And then the data is shown in two different colors. So blue, you can see here, that's week one. And then green here, that's week two. Okay? So I'm going to make up some information. And let's say on the axis, that stays. So number one is day one. Number two is day two. And then number six will be day six. So you're collecting data on each day. And let's say Y axis is formal level in rats. Okay. So now the picture starts to get clear. This could be an experiment where we are testing, let's say, some kind of effective drug on hormone levels in rat. So we collected data for two weeks. And then for each week, we collected data on each day. Now, there are two weeks of data. Um, so oftentimes, this could be a pre-drug or pre-treatment. So this could be control levels, right? We collect data on the hormone levels before we give the rats the drug. So this is pre-treatment. This helps us establish a baseline hormone level that we can compare to later. And then we give the drug to the rats, and then we measure the hormone levels again. So week two could be post-treatment after the drug is given. And then we collect the hormone levels again right, in week two to see if there's any difference between week one and week two. If there's a difference, then it could be contributed to the effect of that particular drug that you use on the rat. Okay, now let me ask a question. So based on this graph, do you see any difference in hormone levels between week one and week two? A few seconds. All right, so the green line is higher than the blue line, right? So we can at least tell from the line graph, just first glance, that the hormone levels are higher in week two than week one. Now, whether the, the difference is meaningful, we'll have to do some statistical analysis, right? But right now, the numbers are higher for week two than week one. Now, you probably have noticed that these data points are not really aligned between the two lines, right? Really, if you collect the data on the same day, there should be like green data point here, blue data point here. And then this green data point should be over here, right? Because these are the data points collected on day two. And same thing here, this data point should be moved to here. So that should be the green line because the data are collected on day three. And it's the same thing for the other test days. So there is some problem with this line graph, but I do like the different colors as a very good contrast. The last graph that I want to show is a pie chart. Pie chart is very helpful to kind of help you compare the different categories, which category contributes the most to the data. Because everything is in one circle, right? Just by looking at the size of the different slices, you can derive which category contributes the most and which category contributes the least, right? The larger the slice is, the larger the contribution. And the smaller the slice, the smaller the contribution. 
Okay, so there is a title for this pie chart, which is nice. And this is about U.S. balance of trade deficit. And this is 2014 data. Okay, so a lot of times the time is important because you need to know which data, right? Is the data from 2000 or is it from 2020? So the year of the data is critical. This is trade deficit between U.S. and these countries. And over here, that's the chart legend, right? So if you look at this chart, let's say this light blue color, right? You can go to this legend section and you can find the blue color pretty easily, right? And you know, okay, this blue color represents Japan. So this is U.S. balance of deficit to Japan. Right? And then there are numbers on the side too. So you can um, find a particular piece of information very, very easily. Um, I think this is pretty straightforward. So let me just ask you a couple of questions to practice reading this pie chart. First question, which color in the pie chart represents the second largest trade deficit between US and that country? Okay, three seconds. Okay, so you can see the red that's China, that's obviously the biggest slice, right? So this is the country that US has the largest deficit to. And then the second largest slice is this yellow part, right? You go to the legend, you find the yellow color and that's Germany and the numbers are right here. Now in this case, it's easy because the countries are ranked by the amount of deficits. Okay, my next question is, What's the uh, balance of trade deficit between U.S. and Italy? Three seconds. So you need to go to the legend, and then you find Italy, and then the numbers are right here. So this is $25. The, uh, the absolute number, absolute deficit in dollar, and also the percentage, right, among the overall trade deficit right, to all the countries. So that's the information over here. I think this is a good exercise because you can apply your knowledge with these charts and graphs to the reading section too. Sometimes some of the reading questions will give you a chart, a table, and then you need to look for a particular piece of information from those uh, sources. All right, I hope you find the video helpful. Good job, guys. I will see you next time.